I have a message to all of the people of New York. As we are aware, today is April 19th, 2016, and it is the day of the primary on both the Democrat side and the Republican side for this election. And, you know, this is, this is going to be quite difficult because I've made it clear I'm not big on either front runner on either side. So, I think it's important to remember a few things when voting today. Now, on the Republican side, conservatives have to ask themselves, who's had a proven record of actually getting things done? Who do we know is capable of doing things and actually giving effort and not just going along with everyone else? Who do we know is actually beneficial towards our group of people? Now, if you go to tedcruz.org, you'll see what I'm talking about. He's shown multiple times that he can get things done on the right, whereas Trump is a loose cannon who has no experience whatsoever. And it kills me that people would talk about Obama being inexperienced, oh, and a one-term senator. But we're going to put someone in office who we know has had no governing experience at all. So that's that just seems backwards to me in a way. But again, that that's their choice. And obviously he's leading by a lot in all of the polls. I don't expect Cruz to win. I expect Trump to win. I just hope it's not by a margin that is so large that it just oof, popular vote. But again, that's that's their choice. I, I really hope Kasich figures uh, figures out and gets a clue and just finally gets out because there really is no point for him to still be in this race. He needs more delegates than they're even available. And those eight states to get on the ballot in the broker convention don't seem to be coming anytime soon. That's all I'm getting at. Now, on the Democrat side, you have Clinton and Sanders. I've made it clear about my feelings for Clinton multiple times. And Bottom line, Democrats, but, but no, there's, there's a couple of different kinds. So the moderates will, you know, just love her because that's the po that's the cool thing. That's the popular, just wonderful thing to do. Go and like this person that everyone else likes for no reason whatsoever. But ask yourself one thing. If you are what you would deem a progressive, which candidate has a super PAC? Which one does not? Which one has basically gone to bed with, with Wall Street, with Goldman Sachs? Which one has not? Which one proclaimed he would not be a friend of the banks due to his record on their exploits of the American economy? Just, just wanted to think that for a second. It's, it's fairly clear what way a person should vote if they know and are disillusioned by the fact that Clinton supported Wall Street. She supports Goldman Sachs. They support her campaign. They are hand in hand together. And I don't think Democratic voters should be playing themselves for fools going for someone who they cannot trust in any regard. Or even, and we've seen that with Benghazi, we've seen that with Whitewater, we've seen that with the email scandal. You know, the, those those have gone back decades, but the point is we've seen her do things that are questionable. But not only that, people have made a consensus, and I've noticed this with a lot of videos, that Clinton will be the nominee, Trump will be the nominee. Trump seems a, lo a lot more likely to me than Clinton, only because he has mo more state wins. Uh, or, or I take that back, he has roughly the same, but the problem is that Cruz is down by 10 states. So that I'm just going to make mention of that. But regardless, you have polls that have come out in Florida, in Ohio, in New Hampshire, these, these swing states that can go either way. And one thing they've shown us multiple times over the last couple of months, not even a couple of months, just this entire period since this cycle started, Sanders does better in a general election against either Trump or Cruz or even Kasich, who, you know, is almost non-existent at this point. 
And unlike Rubio, who people kept trying to say, oh, if you want to win, you vote for him. If you want to win, you vote for him. If you want to win, you vote for him. He actually has been winning states. He's won 17. Clinton's won 20. If he wins this one, that'll be 18 to 20. It's unlikely that he will. But the point I'm making is surprises have occurred before. Look at Michigan. That was a complete shock. No one expected him to win that state, and he did. So I know it's possible. I know the people in New York will realize that there is someone for them. They're not supposed to just bow down to Clinton because she's carpetbagging from the state. And I will, I will, you know, I will use that in this case because, again, she's not originally from there. That's fine, I suppose. But Sanders was in New York his whole childhood. And I think that's important to note because that's a man who has deep roots there that you can't just overlook. He didn't arrive in Vermont until he was a man. So I'm just... That all I'm getting at is with Clinton, it's the exact opposite. She was an older lady when she got over there. Nothing wrong with age, but we have to remember who is naturally from there, who understands the way that things are, and bottom line, you just have to go with the person that's right, and I think Sanders is right. Now, on the, on the Republican side, conservatives, please, if you want someone who actually has a record of getting things done and someone who does not talk about women in such a grotesque, negative, disgusting, despicable way. Cruz is the guy to go for. And I'm not saying that as a member of his campaign or anything, but I, I genuinely believe he stands a much higher chance of actually getting things done, even getting there in the first place, than Trump ever would have. We could have 90 elections, and it would go for Clinton or Sanders each time. Not me, but just the electorate. I honestly believe that. And I, I have some solace in believing that because I really do not want him. But regardless of how you vote, thank you for voting and have a good day.